you can see that this question is referring to uh, we're, we're investigating the motion of an object that is decelerating. So decelerating means that the speed is going to is going to decrease. So initially we have a speed of 39 and then the car is going to decelerate which means the speed will reduce with this amount. Now that amount highlighted in blue is an acceleration. Now when I say acceleration, acceleration can be positive or negative. So some people say decelerate, but you can just say acceleration and put a negative sign. It means the same thing. Like if I say to you, I lost $5, I could just say minus $5. I don't have to use the word loss. I can just say minus $5. And most people would interpret that to mean exactly what you think it means. So this question is more about interpreting what negative three, oops, let me get that uh, equation box there. What does negative three meters per second squared really mean? That's what this question is helping you interpret. Well, what it means is every second that passes, the speed is reduced by three meters per second. So if we take a look in the, at, the, uh, at the quantity here, we're starting with 39. So we can quickly see the pattern here that the speed's going to be 39, 36, 33, 30, etc. The question wants us to, in, in a very, you know, in a concise way, communicate that, but also with units and with clarity. I don't want you to just write some numbers on a page. I want you to communicate it nicely. So a nice way to communicate it would be a table or a graph. So here's a table that I prepared for us so that you could uh, not have to suffer through me writing on the screen. So this would be the table of values that describes the motion of this object. So you can see that initially the speed is 39. And as time evolves, here we have one, two, three, four, five seconds, because it says five seconds. We don't care what happens after five seconds. The speed is going down by three units every time, and those units are in meters per second. And uh, that's pretty much it. Are there any questions about that one? Did, let me know in the chat. Did you find that easy? Did you find that confusing? What do you think? That we got one easy. Well, hopefully, uh, yeah. Hopefully, nothing too dangerous. It doesn't. It doesn't really tell the whole story in terms of what you need to understand, because um, we want to understand. This blue thing here, three, ne negative three meters per second squared, um, what caused that? Like, what was the forces, or what were the forces acting on it, or what was the mass of the object? These are the kind of questions that you want to think about that are prerequisite to this question. So we'll move on to another example shortly. But question 11, I'm going to go here for a second. It says here, we're talking about Newton's first law of motion. Now, the answer to this question is at the end of the chapter, so I'm not going to discuss this question in detail because I've given you a cheat sheet at the end of, the, uh, of, of this uh, slideshow, and it, it summarizes this. This is available for you on Blackboard. I will update this file on Blackboard. You know where I put the lecture slides, my, my annotated lecture slides. I state all of Newton's laws of motion in, uh, in a detailed way, so basically, that question is asking you to just research a little bit about what Newton's uh, first law is. So I'll leave that one for you to do on your own. And we'll dip over to question number 12. So 12, question 12 is a remix of question number 10. So in this case, we have an object that is going to uh, move and its motion is going to change because it's going to speed up or slow down is what I'm saying, because there is a force being applied. And this force is not balanced, meaning that since it's not balanced, 
by Newton's second law, it will accelerate. And that was kind of the big thing that I talked about with you last time when I was drawing all those carts on the board. So I will draw a cart for this one as well. Although you don't actually have to draw the picture. On your assignment, I give you a question involving uh, something like this. And I do ask you to draw a picture. So if you bear with me, just for a second here, I'm gonna draw the worst diagram of a cart. So it says here that there is a 25 kilogram cart. So that's 25 kilos. And it is uh, initially at rest. So initially it's just chilling there, it's just at rest. But then what happens is a force is applied, see here, of 100 newtons for three seconds. So for the first three seconds, we have a 100 newton force. It could be pushing or pulling. As you know, a force is a push or a pull. I'll just assume it's pushing it to the right. So this is the diagram that describes the motion for the first three seconds. Maybe I should just write that in English. There you go, three seconds. Now, what happens afterward? Well, afterward, this force is removed. So let's get rid of it. And then uh, I'll just say afterward, okay? All good. No stress. Okay. It says here, describe as fully as possible the speed of the cart over the first 10 seconds. I'm gonna make a note here, it's initially at rest. So what, that, what does it mean to have initially at rest? It's balanced. Yeah, it's balanced, thank you, Denny. And that means that it will not accelerate. So I'm gonna make a table now. It's a little slow. Just bear with me for a second. We're not doing too many examples today, but it's nice to just kind of have it all summarized here neatly. Time in seconds and then speed in meters per second. So when the time is zero, the speed is zero. Now, I'm not putting the units here because the headers have the units. So we're going to count to 10. You ready? One, which is fun. I just need one more row. And I want you to help me figure out what the heck is happening to this cart. So for the first three seconds, it has an unbalanced force. That means that it will accelerate. So how will it accelerate? Well, we did the math for that last time. Do you remember the formula? F equals MA. That's, uh, you're on the right track. Shalon, you're on the right track. So we have here F equals MA. So we have 100 equals 25A. So A equals four. Like that. Any questions about those calculations? <laughs> Thank you, Shalon. Awesome. Okay, so we're good to go here. This kind of reminds me of the other question, which is that we have an acceleration, meaning that as the time goes by, that speed of the object is going to change. So in this case, it's going to speed up. So let's go over here, because what that means, in just plain language, it means every second, the speed of the object will increase by four meters per second. So that's the takeaway what we have from here. So in this case, after one second, the speed will be four. Help me out with them next, four, eight. 12, 
That's okay. 16. Ah, I tricked you. I tricked you. Is it 16? Why? What the heck's going on there? So the key thing is, after three seconds, what happens after three seconds? Speed up. Happens? I don't know. After three seconds. It says here that the force is removed. See here? Afterward, the force is removed. So in this case, we move on. It doesn't speed up and it doesn't slow down. It stays the same. So over here, what happens is, yes, what happens is here, since the net force is zero, the, there is no acceleration. Very important. So for the afterward part, it's just 12. I'll give you an example of, of, of something that you could relate to this. Imagine that I ha I was uh, we were on a skating rink, and I take a, I take my stick. Okay, I, I hear someone's mic on, if you don't mind. Sorry. Okay, so imagine that you take a, a puck on the ice and you push it with your hockey stick. That's what this is saying here. You're pushing the object for three seconds. Once you don't have contact with the puck anymore, the puck just keeps on sliding. Do you understand that it would just keep on sliding? Does that make sense? It just keeps on going. Even though there's even though there's other forces. Well, okay, so Shalon says that at some point it will slow down. And you are correct. But what assumption is made in the question that makes us say we don't have to worry about that for this case? It says here we are assuming no friction. So in real life, there is friction. Yes, Donato. In real life, there is friction. But that friction is so small that even if you were to consider friction, let's say it was on ice, you would see numbers like 11.9, 11.8. So, so in real life, it does slow down because nothing is perfect in real life. It's not ideal. But that's the idea. Now, we can take, if you're like, well, then why don't we why do we do these things if it's not ideal? Well, the thing is is that you need to understand these as a reference for doing more complicated things. If, for example, if you're in space, in space there is friction, but it is so small. It's basically you're counting molecules that are hitting you, which is essentially virtually uh, not a friction that you can even measure in some cases if you're talking about 25 kilogram objects for very short periods of time. Anyway, and of course, hockey pucks are not 25 kilograms. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. So it's an interesting question to understand, and it is a very simplified and ideal example, but I hope that you can better appreciate what I was talking about with this example. So just before we move on, I'm gonna, for your notes later, I'm gonna just decorate this a little bit so, so that you can have the uh, question kind of in two parts. So that's the red stuff there, which is the first phase. And then the second phase is gonna be blue or purple. And then over here, we'll do the same. So that's the purple phase. And over here is the red phase. And that's about it. The red phase includes zero, 00, but I just want zero, 00 separate because it's kind of like the uh, the reference in the question. So we're going to take a look at a couple of examples now that are a little bit out there, a little bit more challenging. And if these are a test or, a, or an assignment, they would be considered like tougher questions. So for that reason, I do want to go a little bit slower. I also want to mention that a question like this, it's a very practical question to understand how pulleys work. I think that you could appreciate in real life and in construction for specific uh, cases for you, um, you would want to know how a pulley system would work. So this is a very simplified example. 
And we are going to look at another example in question 14, which is a, a lot more complicated. But this question and the next one will not impact your ability to proceed in this course. So just to take it as an opportunity to have a little bit of fun, try a couple questions that are weird, and then when we, we, when we reconvene on Friday, we'll be talking about uh, statics, which is uh, situations where things are not moving anymore. So just take a quick read of the question. I'll start discussing it in a minute. Yes, uh, definitely. A, a pulley does have the ability to change the direction. That's exactly one of its purposes. And a pulley system also offers you the ability to exercise um, mechanical advantage. So, for example, if you want to lift something really heavy, you can use a pulley system to, um, in a sense, leverage the force that you can use or apply. So, for example, if, if I can lift 20 pounds, but I can't lift 1,000 pounds, wouldn't want to lift 1,000 pounds, I could, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can zoom a little bit for sure. Now. Okay, so the idea here is that we have a couple of objects that are connected by a pulley. One is hanging and one is on wheels. There's no friction here, so don't worry about friction there. We're gonna cut. We're gonna cut it right there. Okay. We're gonna cut it here. See, it says cut it. So we're gonna cut the the cart at A, and then this thing's gonna freely move this way, down. So, in order to do this question, it's a system. Well, what what I like to do with these types of system questions is divide and conquer. So I'm gonna take each of the objects. And I'm just going to consider what the forces that are acting on the objects individually are. So here's the 7 kilogram cart. I'll clean that up in a second. And here's the 5 kilogram mass, which is object number 2. Yeah, we're assuming the ground is level. I'm not going to play any of those weird games with you. Not in this question, no. Okay. Now, I need to take a little bit of a step back to the previous question here. In this question, there were two other forces acting on this uh, cart. And those forces, I'll draw them now, they were gravity. There's gravity, which I'll call the weight. Now, W here stands for the weight. And then there's a force that's acting up. But the reason I did not bother introducing these forces here was because they cancel each other out. They're equal to each other. So in effect, they, their influence on the object is neutralized. They neutralize each other, just like a tug of war, they tie. So the only force that I cared about was this one. But every object that is in the Earth's influence or under the Earth's influence will always exhibit a W, which is the weight of the object. For those that are a little bit shy about the weight or don't remember what that means, um, I did talk about it last class, but I'll give you like the refresher right here. Let's draw all the forces that act on each of these objects. So here, there is the weight of the first object, but there's also a force acting up, which I'm just going to call it, uh, I'll call it R like a reaction force. And there's also a force going this way. What is this force going to the right? What does that do to? Can someone describe what that force is? What would be that force? Let me know in the chat. OK. So it's, the, it's basically what she's saying is that this force here is like that force there because it's the cable that is connecting them. Now, when cables pull on things, we call that tension. So this letter T here refers to the tension in the cable. It's the tension or tensile force. Let me type that in because that's a word that you might not be familiar with. 
It is the tension in the cable. So T is the tension in the cable. Whoops. Or we'll just call it more properly the tensile force. That's what you should be calling it. Either of those versions is, is a professional way of saying things. And then W for the second object will be the force of gravity. Right here. And since this is object number two, I'll call it W2. We're almost in the clear. There's two quantities here that we don't care about, which is this one and this one. Those two will cancel each other out. So you can just assume, you, I mean, you could calculate them because you do know how many kilograms it is, but you don't care. I wouldn't waste your time calculating it. Now, we do need the weight of the second object. So I'm going to go and get the weight of the second object here. This is based on last class, so if anybody here is not sure what I'm doing right now, you need to dig up the notes or watch the video from last time. The weight of the object is the force of gravity, which in this case, in the metric system, is the mass in kilograms times 9.81. So hopefully someone uh, can hook me up with a number on their calculator there, please. Anybody got a number there? 4905. Now, you want to laugh, though. These numbers, I do have them memorized because if you do enough physics, if you do enough physics, you remember multiples of 9.81. So 9.81, 19.62, 29.73. I just, they're numbers that go in your brain because uh, you, you see them all the time. Anyway, I don't want to digress too much on that, but that's the weight of the second object. So here's the thing. Can someone, in their own words, or just let me know here, does this one win or does this one win? I'm going to say win, like which one's bigger? Which one is bigger from this one? Is the tension bigger or the weight bigger? Okay, let me clarify. I don't want a number there. Is the T bigger or is the W2 bigger? Which is bigger? Which is greater? Which way is this object moving? Can someone tell the class which way is this object moving? Which way is the five kilogram object going to move? Down. If it's moving down, can you clarify then? Does the W win or the T win? Thank you. So hopefully that thought process made sense. I'm going to draw a nice chunky arrow here, indicating that the object's going to accelerate downward. This blue arrow here is not a force. This is the acceleration and its direction. In this case, I'll do a similar arrow. Oh my goodness, that's the worst arrow ever. If you're wondering, it's not me. I'm, I'm not going to be a baby about this. It's not me. It's the, uh, the, the video processing on Blackboard. It's so slow. Honestly, like I'm having a coffee here. I think I need to give this program a coffee to wake up or something. But how can the, okay, so I'm just reading out the question for the people. How can the five kilogram move down when it's connected to the seven kilogram? Because they're tied together. If they're connected, if they're connected, they have to be. It doesn't matter if seven is more. They're a system. They're a system. If they're connected, they have to move with the same acceleration, at least the same uh, quantity. Maybe not the same direction, but the same. It will move because there's no friction. Shalon, there is no friction in the cart. This thing here, this thing here is there's, there's wheels and there's no friction. You can assume it's like it's on ice or it's just sliding across the table. If you think about it carefully, imagine that was ice there. You could have a heavy object there. But if there's no friction, basically, essentially with ice, this is the friction so small that you would you, it would just slide off the table. It would actually pull it right off the table. Yeah. Well, you know what, though? Even with friction, it still, would, there, it still has the potential to go off the table. I don't think you need to put friction that much on a pedestal. In this case, when you have a wheel, <laughs> this is not an object that's rubbing on a surface. This is on wheels. If it's on wheels, the friction is actually not that much proportional to the mass. The friction here could be so small still, and it would still go off the table. 
So we have information here now, and you can see for both diagrams that there are two quantities that match for both diagrams. I want to clarify here. T, just to be clear, the acceleration and the tension, they have the same numerical value for both diagrams. So if the, the acceleration here is, I'll just make up a number. If the acceleration here is three meters per second squared, it's also three here. And the tension here is the same as the tension there because it's transmitting the force. Although it's not in a straight line, that's what cables do. They transmit the tension. And for the most part, um, the tension is uniform. In real life, there is a small variance in the tension because the cable actually has a mass to it. But we're assuming that the cable here is very light compared to the system that the masses are uh, combined in. So I need to move it along, people. I apologize uh, for me dragging it out, but these questions that you have are very good, and and I do want to I do want to respect and discuss the process. So in this object in this uh, object here, this object's going to have an unbalanced force, right? There's an unbalanced force, which is T acting to the right. I can spell. <laughs> there we go. But what we can say is that by Newton's second law, we can say that uh, F equals MA. In this case, that's T equals, uh, what's the mass of this object? What's the mass of this object? Thank you. So T equals 7A. Let me just clean that up a little bit, make it a little bit more aesthetic. Okay, there's an equation. We're not out of the woods yet, but we're getting close. We're gonna to go to the second object and we're gonna say something similar. There is an unbalanced force. Now when I say F equals MA, I should impose a subscript there. Oops. It's F net, meaning the total. Let me put the net here. Because in this case, there's more than one force. And I asked you earlier, which was going to win, so to speak. Oh, Maha. Maha stole my thunder. I love it. Maha, you just came in clutch, my friend there. Mad respect for that. That was awesome. So, in this case, we're going to do this. We're going to say that W minus the tension is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, the mass is 5. We can take it a step further because we do know what W2 is. We calculated that ahead of time. So 4905 minus T equals 5A. I've noticed in marking your assignments and your, your uh, assessments that as a group, I'm not saying everybody individually, but as a group, there is an exceptionally good uh, set of uh, math skills in terms of your algebra. I do see some very good algebra skills in your class. So what you notice here is that we have two equations now. And in Math 1136, which I did not teach you, you should have learned how to solve such a system. So, so now we have a linear system. Whoops. So let me write down that system here. So the way that I'm going to do it is I'll use the method of elimination. Or we can use, sub let's use substitution actually, okay? I like elimination, but substitution is probably more comfortable for people. So write down the first equation. So we write down this equation here. So there it is. And then we sub other equation. So if we take this equation here and we substitute for T, We were basically, we replaced T with 7A. So let's put 7A there. And then you can almost see the answer unfold in front of you. So we have here T, uh, so that equals 12A. So can someone confirm? I did this earlier just on my notepad here. I got 4.09. Can someone confirm, please? Anybody have a confirmation on that? They get 
I'll answer that question in a second. Be, oh, it's a minus because it's the net. It's the difference between the two. Because it's a fight. They're fighting each other. And you have to figure out which one wins and by how much. We did that earlier here. Remember, we did this before. See? Go back to last, well, last Tuesday. Remember these questions? It's this minus this. It was a fight. I'm not trying to be like all violent or whatever. It was a fight between the two. And then you see which one wins. I get very serious. I, I invoke my, uh, my Star Wars Jedi training. Okay. Can someone confirm the 4.09 in the chat, please? Thank you, Maha. Thank you, Shalan. So, there you have it. There you have a nice detailed treatment of a system of masses connected by pulleys. The neat thing is, you can create a formula. So, who would like to see a formula for this question? Formula time, okay? So, here's the cheap formula, okay? Here's a cheap formula. I'm not going to prove it. Uh, normally, I would prove it, but we lost two hours last week uh, for the holiday. And that's those are the extra time where I would kind of do proofs and some other cool stuff. I'll just say here that A is equal to the following. And you're more than welcome to prove this on your own. I'm not going to ask you to prove this in a test anyway. If anybody has studied physics before, they probably have proven this formula. But that's how, that's the answer for the uh, for the question. Sorry, that's the formula for the question. Yeah. So instead of doing all of that work, you can use this cheap formula. Now, this is the truth. This is the God's honest truth, okay? Students that come to class and participate and are engaged. Uh, there is no, for, it's just a, it's a formula for a pulley system of this type. There are infinite pulley systems, so there's no name for this formula. It is the formula for this scenario. Yes, going back to what I was saying is that there are students that they come to class, they're engaged. Basically, I see, I see 17 students here, which is awesome. And, and, and then I tell them, I go, look, if this question's on an exam and you know the formula, you can use the formula. I don't care. It's a reward for you being here. It's a gift. If you don't use the formula, you can still get the answer. And the trade-off is knowing how to do the full method. <laughs> you're welcome. Knowing how to do the full method, though, the advantage there is that if you do get a question that's different, you are able to uh, dissect that question and figure out kind of what's going to happen. So we're going to go to question 14 now, which is the three pulley system, sorry, the three object system. And it's interesting here because uh, there's no masses given. Yeah, G is gravity here. Let me just, let me just uh, give you some tips here. So let me, let me just put the numbers in for this question. So A would equal, in this case, it's going to be 9.81 over here. Whoops. 9.81. I might have to shrink this a little bit because I'm going to be throwing in a bunch of numbers there. And it's 5 over 5 plus 7. You can confirm that that actually is the correct answer. This is actually the answer that you see in the back of the notes as well. So anyway, that's enough of that question. We're going to go over to question 14. I have you for another, uh, I don't know, seven minutes or so. So I don't know if we're going to be able to give this one the royal treatment. Yes, uh, yes, Yifeng. If you if you know the formula, you can definitely use it. So in this question here, we have a similar situation. So I'll call this T1 here. So this is the tension in the first cable. I'll call it T1. And then the other cable over there. I'm going to call it, uh, actually, I'll call that one T1 there, and I'll call this one T2, just because it doesn't matter which is which. 
Now, in this case, there's no friction. So again, there's no friction in the system. So just keep that in mind. So don't forget that this, this as far as you're concerned, this thing's on a block of ice or something. So the object, the system is gonna accelerate this way. It's gonna go this way. It's gonna go uh, clockwise. So that's the motion of the object. In this case, there's no numbers given. You see how you have M, M, and 3M. If that perplexes you, what you can do is, as a starter, you don't have to do this, but uh, to help, you can, and I'll just say or optionally, uh, let M equal one kilogram. So that's just an optional thing, but for students that are a little bit more intimidated by this question, you can just assume that it's a one kilogram mass. So I'm going to walk you through the physics of it, but I'm not going to walk you through the math of it. You'll understand what I mean. I'm going to set up the Newton's laws, but I'm not going to show you the step-by-step -step, uh, algebra after because that part there, um, you're going to have to challenge yourself a little bit. It's not too bad. It's just uh, it's a system, but it has three variables. So anyway, we'll go back to here. This is the system here, just the three objects. And uh, I'm just going to quickly give you the rundown here. So this mass is one kilogram. I'm just going to put a one on top of it because I'm assuming it's one kilogram. That's a one. And that's a three. So that's why I'm not I'm not cheaping it out. I'm just doing that now. But you can definitely ignore that. I get that you can ignore that. Uh, what do you call it? That assumption. Uh, the formula will not work here, Shalon. You have to create a new formula. Because this formula has an object hanging off the left side. If you don't mind, people, I'm just kind of giving you the express version here. And you're more than welcome to work this one out. Like, honestly, if this was on a test, it would certainly be the hardest question on the test. It would not be an easy question. Because uh, unless I've covered it with you, which I'm kind of half, half covering it with you right now, just to give you a head start on it. There's a downward force here and an upward force here, like gra the gravity and the reaction. But they cross each other out, so that's why I'm just kind of doing that to them. I'm just, you can ignore them. Not ignore them, but you can um, just uh, pass by them because they are um, neutralizing each other. So what we're going to have is an object or a system in this case, which is accelerating. In this case, it accelerates up. In this case, it accelerates, uh, that's supposed to be to the right. Okay, honestly. And then this way it accelerates down. So I'll write down Newton's law for all three of these. And then you have an algebraic system that you can solve. So here's the first one. And I'm going to go a little bit quicker here. In this case, yt1 arrow left side. Over here. Because it's pulling. See the cable, on, if you look at the mass here, it's pulling on it. This mass... Is a, is a fight between two cables. One cable is pulling it to the left, and one cable is pulling it to the right on both sides. I'll add, you know what, let's go with Ram's comment here. I'll do this one first. This one here is a fight. It's a fight between T2 and T1, but T2 wins. Which one wins here? Can someone tell me which one wins before I bury myself deeper here? Uh, so it's going to be moving up. So T1 wins. And then we have your M1A. And then over here, oh my god. All right. Let's see here. In this case, we have W3 winning. There we have that, okay? So you would set up the system, and then after that, you're pretty much on, on pace for solving things. So 
I need to calculate W1 and, uh, and W3. So those things there, you can uh, figure them out by hand, I guess. Just a second. Okay. So in this case, um, you can help me get the numbers here. W1. What's W1? So W1 is 1 times 9.81, and that will equal 1 times A. In this case, M2, M2 is 1 also. And then over here, we have the mass of the third object which is 3 times 9.81 and 3 times A. So at that point, you'll have a system of equations that you can solve. So this equation here is going to be T1 minus 9.81 equals A. This is uh, T2 minus T1 equals A. And this one over here, 9.81 times 3. So at this point, you would have to solve all three of these equations together. There's various ways to solve these equations. I'm going to leave that for you as an exercise. But the way that I would solve it, so this is a homework question really now. Um, the way that I solve it is take all three equations and add them together. So it's an elimination. So if you take the first equation and the second equation and the third equation and you add them together, Then what do you get on the left side? You get 19.62, and on the right side you get 5a. And then and then you're done. A is equal to uh, 3.92. I guess I finished the question now. Might as well have. Anyway, that was a pretty nasty one. This one goes a lot better when uh, when I when I put you in teams and I get you to kind of figure it out. There is a, there potentially would be a formula that you could create. I I can write a formula for you. I don't mind writing a formula for you. But then I'm gonna I, I feel bad because I'm holding you back uh, in terms of time because we should have finished class like five minutes ago. Anyway, because I can't remember people's names today, let me, uh, <laughs> because I'm having, no, it's not bad. I literally had a conversation with someone before class, and the name's stuck in my head now. Anyway, um, here we have M3 minus M1, and then on the bottom we have M1 plus M2. So if there's any students in here that feel eager to uh, prove this, go through the entire question and don't use any numbers. And eventually you will get this formula. But this formula, I'm not going to derive it in class because we are out of time. So thank you for a very good class today. I was, a, uh, you know, started off a little bit on the motion, and then we did some uh, weird and uh, fun stuff regarding systems of pulleys. Okay. You're free to go. I'll stick around for questions regardless. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.